early September 1966, and again the sound of big engines is heard in the normally quiet waters of the Solent as the competitors warm up for the Daily Express International Offshore Powerboat Race. Many boats are new to the event this year. Here's Jim Wynn and Ghost Rider. News of the world, an all-British diesel entry for Peter Twist. Flying Fish, with 1,375 horsepower, the most powerful of all. Merrick Lewis, second last year, is to drive Thunderbolt. There are many old friends, too. Tramontana. Peter and Jane Hicks, and Seven Dials. Lady Violet Aitken, and Ultraviolet. And Steve Macy's Spirit of Ecstasy. As usual, the week before is one of frenzied activity with most of the boats in various states of undress. There are new engines for Thunderbolt and Thunderbird. One exception is Sir Fury. She's ready for the race and there's time for Charles Gardner, bearded this year, to chat with Peter Twist. Peter's own mount is having troubles, mainly with the mountings for her four heavy Foden diesels. People are saying that she isn't as fast as she should be. There's trouble too for Jackie S, Dr. Savundra's old boat. A writ has to be removed before her new owner can take her out of Southampton water. The rules this year require all boats to be maneuverable on one engine, so many of them have detachable rudders to please the scrutineers. Don Shedd in Delta 28 is considered a hot favorite. His boat, designed in Italy and built in cows, is thought by many to be lethal, with its 1,200 horses packed into only 28 feet of hull. There are handling problems at full throttle, they say, and Shed dare not use his maximum. With three days to go, Big Moose, all 44 feet of her, isn't even finished building, and the night shift is fighting the clock. Her engines are still in plastic. How they'll get run in, nobody knows. Flying Fish, built originally for Emile Savundra, is entered by her builders, Vospers. She's of aluminum construction and rumored to be a good boat in rough weather. A Japanese expert from Mitsubishi advised on stressing the hull. She will be driven by Mike Trimming. And then, of course, there's Ghost Rider. Jim Wynn is tied for second in the World Drivers' Championships. Ghost Rider is the only British-built boat ever to win the Miami Nassau race, and her twin Daytonas are said to push her along at 75 miles an hour. On the day before the race, the scrutineering. Already there are grave doubts about the weather. Rumor has it that the long drag to Torquay will have to be canceled and that a shortened course in the Solent will be substituted. Sir Max Aiken's vivacity comes in. His diesel record holder, merry-go-round, was dropped during unloading in America. Lady Violet is one of the two women drivers. The other is Jane Hicks. Trident once belonged to Don Shedd. There's Keith Schellenberg's Thunderstreak and Thunderfish, owned by Albert Figgins. Commander Petroni, tied for second in the World Championships, is to drive Thunderbird. Where's your own boat? The Delta Blue, um, after the race in the can, had some trouble with the turbines, and uh, the medic was very kindly put in my disposal uh, Thunderbird, so I'm driving that. You hope that this will make you first in the championship? Oh, no, I don't think so, but uh, it's fun to try. A very sporting gesture, because Merrick Lewis is himself leader of the championship. He'll be driving Thunderbolt, the boat which won him the Viareggio and Cyprus events. There's a splendid mascot for Jackie S., now under the ownership of John Robinson. Let's hope it brings him the luck the boat deserves. The next in is news of the world. A lot of last-minute work has been done, and Peter Twist, once holder of the world's airspeed record, seems happy enough. Just before lunch, Flying Fish comes in. Nobody really knows a great deal about her except her builders and Mike Trimming. What's she like? Well, we're very happy with it at the moment. Um, the engines are running very well. We just hope the weather sticks up, that's all. It's a very good rough weather boat. We've had it out several times in the rough, and um, we're very pleased with her. Delta 28 is also in. Is it right that you have handling problems at high speed, Don? Yes, I think she's absolutely right in that um, we now find that the engines are giving more power than the boat was originally designed for. It was designed assuming we'd only have 400 horsepower per engine. We now find we've got 600, so we're embarrassed at the top of end. 
There are no big dramas at the scrutineering, and the drivers do their paperwork, and very charming some of it is, too. Still, the anxiety about the weather persists. Will the race be run, and over what course? Will the boats be able to produce their rated speeds? We asked Jimmy Gardner of Sir Fury. Um, I think the weather's going to prevent that. I think it's going to be a rough race, and uh, whether we get down to Torquay or whether they're going to have the inside course, uh, we just have to wait and see. Is the opposition really stiff? Oh, there are about five boats. I think we're all roughly the same speed, and um, I think there's going to be some broken machinery before we get the other end. And here's Ghost Rider, owned by Hugh Doyle, to be driven by Jim Wynn. All that remains is to fuel up, attend the briefing, and find out what the Met men say. In the event, no decision is reached, and it all depends on what the morning brings. But the two Braves are there, Borderer and Swordsman, to patrol the race, if it ever starts. The final decision on weather is taken an hour and a half before the start. It is to run the full course with its small loop at the eastward end of the Solent. Back through Cowes, then the big circuit from South Sea, round Ventnor and the Nab, and back again through the Solent, past the Needles and on to Torquay. A Force 3 southwesterly is already blowing, and with the tag end of Hurricane Faith promised around Lime Bay, the competitors have been warned. Get there as quickly as you can, the quicker the better. And that's the news as the 10-minute gun is fired. In six years, this race has become the most coveted event in the whole powerboat calendar. Every year, the number of spectators grows. Five minutes to go now, and already the boats are formed up alongside brave swordsmen, jockeying for positions for the rolling start at the squadron line. Beautifully placed, Sir Fury is over at full throttle, streaking into the lead, leaving the field to work it out for themselves. Leaving a frothy white cauldron of water behind, the others give chase. In the sheltered Solent, the power to weight ratio of Delta 28 soon breaks down Sir Fury's lead. Behind is Flying Fish, leading Jackie S, Tramontana, and Petroni's Thunderbird. Out front, it's top revs, and Shed is on the way up. As they come to the first turn, Delta 28 seems well ahead of Sir Fury, and the others are far away. There's Tramontana leading Thunderbird, but Petroni is soon to lose his chances of the world championship. Win in Ghost Rider has been in trouble right from the start. A spark plug is fouled, and there are only 15 of his 16 pots at work. Back through cows, it's Don Shedd and Delta 28 at an average speed of 56 miles an hour, with Sir Fury second, but credited with the same passage time. Then Merrick Lewis in Thunderbolt, one minute down. Mike Trimming in Flying Fish is just ahead of Peter Twiss and News of the World. Jackie S is sixth at 44 miles an hour, with Ghost Rider and Tramontana not far behind. But with the water still calm, Don Shedd is increasing his lead over Sir Fury, and his speed is up to 57 miles per hour, although there's still nothing much in it. Next is Merrick Lewis in Thunderbolt. Then there's a bit of a gap before news of the world, headed by flying fish, come through. the position at the South Sea turn. On towards Benbridge, and still the order is the same, but Delta 28 is slowly gaining on Sir Fury. boy, and it's possible to compare the riding of the two boats in the same water. Thunderbolt 
is still third. What nobody outside knew was that Don Shedd had lost one of the hoses on the water ballast pump, which made stability hard to come by. That and the tremendous torque from his 1,200 horsepower twin Daytonas give the boat a spinning motion. Thunderbolt is gaining on Sir Fury, but the gardeners can bide their time. Their boat was designed for bigger water than this. Don Shedd is still the leader. Delta is a minute up at Ventnor, and it's here the Thunderbolt moves up to challenge Sir Fury, and there's a neck and neck struggle for second place. But the effort of chasing Delta is too much, and a lost prop ends the Merrick Lewis challenge almost before it has begun. Back towards South Sea, but now trying to repair the ballast pump loses Delta two minutes, and Sir Fury is in the lead again. The news of the world is fifth. Ramontana, sixth. Jackie S., ninth. And into cows limps Petroni with his now single-engined Thunderbird. Through cows, it's Sir Fury in the lead, with the Gardeners an unbelievable seven minutes ahead of Delta 28, which has had to stop again with fuel trouble. But Delta's still there, and the race hasn't really started yet. Ghost Rider and Flying Fish. Wind's plug is clear, and all 16 pots are firing now. Making all the experts into liars, the boat with a reported top speed of 40 miles per hour, news of the world, comes through next at an average of 46. Then Tramontana, but in trouble with no oil pressure on one of the Jaguars. Thunderfish is seventh. Lady Violet, eighth. Jackie S, ninth. Spirit of Ecstasy, just ahead of G, is 11th, already 38 minutes behind Sir Fury. That's the sort of race it is. Sir Fury, designed by Sonny Levy and built by suitors of cows, is making hay while the sun shines and the wind doesn't blow too hard. Dum Dum is in 26th place. Espoir, 28th. The needle's now, and the weather is still not as bad as expected, but the signs are there. Nearly half the course completed, it's going to be rough, tough going for the rest of the way. Already the gardeners are nearly 11 minutes ahead of the rest of the field, and there's only the Navy for company on the way across to Bournemouth. Sir Fury's length gives her a big advantage in this long swell, but there's still some 100 miles to go. Round the Boscombe turn, with the crowds at Bournemouth straining to catch a glimpse of the flying boats. Still 11 minutes behind are the next contenders. Don Shedd hanging on to second place from Flying Fish with Ghost Rider fourth. Boscombe sees the end of News of the World, and Don Shedd is soon to go with a fractured exhaust manifold boiling his petrol. Treacherous overfalls off Swanage and St. Albans Head tell the drivers that the party's over. The calm waters are behind and the race is to the toughest. At this moment, that's Sir Fury by a long, long way. Her average so far has been 52 miles an hour. 
but now the speed begins to drop as the heavy water is encountered. Still her only soulmate is Brave Swordsman. Otherwise, for as far as the eye can see, the waters are deserted. The great rolling swell is taking a hand now. As one driver said, it just came at us. You couldn't dodge it. Sir Fury twists and turns as the waters take her, but she is riding beautifully, although the pounding must surely tell. at Portland get a good view as she comes in close to take advantage of the sheltered water. There's not many tricks on this course that Jimmy and Charles Gardner don't know. Out into Lime Bay with its 45 nautical miles of unprotected water. Four minutes behind is Flying Fish, now in second place, but soon destined for a watery grave. But there are no troubles now, as young Mike Trimming puts her nose forward, holding off the challenge of Ghost Rider, bucking madly and unable to fill her forward ballast tanks. But that isn't all. Wynn's co-driver is lying aft, both ankles broken. Wynn thought Flying Fish was leading. He didn't realize Sir Fury was ahead. Fifth is Thunderfish. Sixth, Spirit of Ecstasy, 51 minutes behind. Seventh, Lady Violet Aitken. Ninth, Seven Dials, Peter and Jane Hicks. Tenth, G. Broad Jumper, 11th. But ahead, Sir Fury is chugging home. An engine mounting gone and a crankcase smashed. Flying Fish, too, is in the last moments of her race. This is just before an obstacle split her hull wide open. Now there's win and only win. With Shed out, the nearest competitor is 38 minutes behind. But can Bob Sherbert stand the pounding? Can Ghost Rider stay together? Wynn, not knowing where the other boats are, thanks his lucky stars that he had her built more strongly than is usually the case and hammers on. Imagine if you can, Bob Sherbert's agony as his hand fights for a restraining grip on the boat's side. Imagine the thoughts of the driver as he strives alone to win the only big powerboat race he has never won. What a decision to have to make, but Bob Sherbert has already made it. Go on, he said, and win. In second place now is Steve Macy, the man who has entered every race, finished all of them, and never come higher than ninth. The Scaries boy brings the promise of calmer waters, coast sheltered to the end. Thirty-six minutes separate him from Macy in the spirit of ecstasy, but Wynn doesn't know this now. Down through the last lap he thunders, into the welcome of Torquay and the winner's gun to make his record of victories complete. But there's no big throttling back, no quiet glide into the winner's berth. Ghost Rider comes in in a great wide power sweep to get the faithful Bob Sherbert to a hospital as quickly as possible. Still conscious, in spite of his ordeal, Bob is carried gently ashore. 
Taken unawares, he had been caught with legs stiff as Ghost Rider hammered down. Such are the dangers and the thrills of powerboat racing. And from the winner, a final word. Well, it was a very, very rugged trip. It was one of the most rugged that I've ever been on, really. We had a little trouble at the start. Uh, we had a spark plug that uh, fouled out, and uh, we ran the first, uh, almost the first hour on seven cylinders. And I was very surprised. Uh, I thought we'd really had it completely, and all of a sudden, then it cleared out, and away we went. By this time, we were pretty well behind the leaders, and uh, we caught flying fish at that point. And uh, I couldn't see anyone ahead, and I thought they were in the lead, so we slowed down and just stayed with them. But uh, then it wasn't until in Lime Bay when we passed Charles Gardner with Surf Fury broken down that we realized that he'd been still further ahead and uh, we'd never seen him. What happened to Bob Sherbert? Well, we came down off a very big wave. Uh, uh, it was just past Portland Bill in Lime Bay and his uh, leg twisted under him. I'm afraid it's broken. They've taken him to the hospital and it uh, looks like he has a broken leg. He was in a great deal of pain. Uh, he wedged himself down in the cockpit uh, sitting on the floor and uh, I immediately started to slow down and he uh, motioned me to keep going and uh, the way we want. He's a tremendously game fellow. I think it was probably the proudest moment of my life when I was presented with the trophy. It's the only one of the big events I'd never won. Oh, by the way, I forgot to introduce myself. As you probably guessed, I'm Jim Wynn. Let me say again that it's been probably the most thrilling moment of my life to be here for this race, and thank you one and all.